munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to another rescue intake story. This one is actually a surrender intake at the rescue, but we say rescue just because that's the type of work we usually are doing. We're usually on Craigslist rescuing in need of hamsters. We can't save them all. So we try to take the most dire need. And this one was actually on our wait list, I think for maybe a week or two. And we were not aware that this animal was special needs. So I have her here and I want to introduce her to you right away so you're able to see this cutie. Her name is Buttercup, however, we changed it later on, but let me introduce Buttercup to you first. This is her right there. And the reason why she's in this, so you guys can see her clearly, even though she's trying really hard to escape right now, you can probably tell she looks a little different. She looks extra cute. Why is that? Oh girl, I see you coming over to me. Well, the reason is, is because she's not fully hand tame. And I wanna make sure that if for whatever reason, she wants to just like jump out of my hands, which I would like to hold her or attempt to hold her to show you guys uh, just exactly what we typically do at the rescue. I have her in here just in case. And also when she stretches up like that, I also want you guys to at least attempt to see her underside because we're gonna be talking about her situation here because she's a special needs hamster. Well, guess what guys? We got her and immediately I am very familiar with brachycephalic hamsters. And these hamsters are actually shortening of the face because of a genetic deformity. And these guys are not like hydros, which you might've heard the term hydrocephalus. Usually they have tooth problems. They have eye discharge, which cannot be controlled. Unfortunately, all you have to do is add like a little warm cotton cloth and just wipe away their wetness around their eyes and make sure that's clear and nothing's actually getting in there. And also they sometimes have breathing issues so you might just hear them sniff a bunch and that's completely normal it's not like your hamster has a cold or anything it's because of their airways and or are not functioning like a regular hamsters would but she does have a very short face here and i know the camera is focusing a lot on my face right now now her surrender intake the family was not aware that she, oh gosh, you're pooping a lot, girl. I'm sorry. They said that she was way too hyper. Unfortunately, daughter just couldn't bond with her like their previous hamster. And so they want to rehome her to a rescue where she would be able to actually get a home that is suited towards her and we can work out those kinks. And when we got her, she was very hyper, very hard to even tame. And she wanted nothing to do with humans. But now she actually wants treats all the time. She hears us, she comes to the door. She's like, you got food? Yeah, hook me up. <laughs> but for her, as soon as we noticed that she had a short face, we immediately notified them and they were very open to education about this condition and were actually very surprised and shocked, especially when we started to pull back her mouth. Now, when we pulled back her mouth, I have pictures so you can see it, but there was no bottom teeth and only one top incisor that was actually misaligned and curling and going into the roof of her mouth. And because it's misaligned, we had to go ahead and extract it at our vets, which our vets is pretty much amazing and incredible. But she also had an abscess that we were informed of by this family, so we wanted to see her soon. But they said the abscess was going down in size. However, the abscess was most likely the result of a previous tooth breaking. So it's unfortunate that because she had brittle teeth, because of her condition, and because they broke off or misaligned, that she got the abscess. And oh, this little girl, she's so sweet. So let me just show you exactly how we were able to show the people how to check her teeth. Because doing health checks is important for hamster owners, especially Syrian hamster owners, because a lot of people are not aware that they might have tooth problems or they might have like a tumor or an abscess on their chest if you don't flip them over or they weren't aware that maybe there's a gender problem where they thought it was a female and it's actually clearly a male. So it's a good idea to do a health check. But in this case for their mouth, you have to really pull back so that it can open wide so you can actually look inside and see if there's two bottom and two top teeth. Now they do have molars, but the main teeth when it comes to eating solid food is the incisors. So if they don't have that, they have to be on wet food only. And and that's the problem where a lot of these guys are just not identified by hamster owners because they just don't know the condition and their hamster ends up starving. So basically you wanna make sure that you have them on their back and that you're scruffing right behind their head here. Hi, sweetheart. Yes, I know. Now this is how you can actually check to make sure that their pads of their feet are fine. She 
right now is a very, very hyper hamster that does not want to be held. She's one of the more severe cases, but that's because she's very horny and she just is bouncing off the walls. I know you're cleaning yourself. So you got to pull back and I'm just kind of showing you right now. That's how you can see the teeth in there. So it's important to make sure to do body checks because if you never did a body check and you never checked out their teeth or their underside, you might not catch like a severe injury, maybe a scent gland tumor or a problem, maybe could misidentify the gender of them, etc. So we're just happy that this family decided to surrender to us which we had the knowledge and experience because if they went somewhere else or if they just gave their hamster up to another family without knowing the severity of the tooth problem that it just kept curling, not breaking off, but curling and that the hamster was not able to properly eat, that hamster could have died. So we're very thankful for that. And they did give us a ton of stuff that right now I actually wish to share with you. So this is the stuff right here. And this is what she came with. So we get to actually kind of go through all this so I can actually talk to you guys about it. We have had her for a little bit here, but we just kind of put this, all of this into a corner. So just letting you know in advance that this has been sitting around for a couple weeks, but there is things that we use at the rescue that if we get in any sort of intakes, we've already set it up before they come in. Sometimes we are notified that we're getting stuff, but sometimes it could be very little, sometimes it could be inappropriate. So I'm just gonna kind of show you the things here and talk to you a little bit about them. Now with this uh, family, they were very understanding, but our main concerns was because she was medical. So when we did receive this, I did not realize there was a bunch of punch holes and I didn't realize this was a double stacker because this right here is not deemed appropriate in the hamster community. Even though it is divided into two spaces right here so you don't have fall damage, there is unfortunately poor construction, which, you know, they tried, but you never want to have punched holes in here because the hamster, if they had teeth, which in this case, she had one tooth and it was definitely very screwed up. But if they had teeth, they could just rim it right around here and open it up even further because this type of plastic is very flimsy. And for an animal who can shoot through plastic very easily, this will eventually make them escape. Not to mention inside of here, as you probably are seeing, is the KT Critter Trail tubes. These are not appropriate for Syrians and Syrians have actually died in them. KT is obviously aware of this. They've been doing this for over two decades now with the same stuff, the same cages, the same tubing. And even though the community has provided, hey, your thing that was supposed to be for my animal that you said it was for, killed it. And they're like, oh, oh, did it now. Oh, I'm terribly sorry about that. This right here for a Syrian setup is completely incorrect. Now they were loving people and the mother obviously uh, was very loving for the animal. It's unfortunate that her daughter just lost interest and they just could not handle her because in the beginning she was just so frantic, so wild. And so I could understand the frustrations and then just having them not being able to take care of her anymore and think that it was the right decision to rehome to rescue who would rehome her to someone who was more suited for her. So no shame with that there because they actually did contact us. I know the internet really likes to just dig into people and rip them apart, but we need to take a step back and realize not everybody is going to, you know, know from the get-go what is and isn't appropriate because pet companies like Katie with these critter tubings, they don't really provide a very comforting and positive environment. It's just very money grabbing and they just give this information to unsuspecting pet owners at a pet store-like environment where they purchase the animal from and it causes complications further down the road that not many people are aware of or are observant of. It isn't until something happens at a very later date that they realize, shoot, I messed up. And definitely these people were very nice and kind and they actually provided a huge donation towards her medical expenses later down the line because definitely teeth extractions are expensive and just going to surgery is expensive. So we thank them dearly for at least doing that. Like they didn't even have to, they just handed us something and we were like flabbergasted and then they handed us more and we were <laughs> Thank you, geez, that was, that really made my day. I didn't actually know how much until I went to the bank to make a deposit for our business account and then realized, oh, oh wow. Okay, that was definitely cover surgery. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so with that being said, let's just kind of open this up so you can at least take a look. So they did have stuff on top of here. And now this, this is perfectly done. I like what they did here. But then adding tubing to here just made it really messy. But this is supposed to be for hamsters where they can connect to something much like this, which is actually where I try to get her out from. This was actually, I think, like, was this like this? Yes, it was like this. So this is actually how it looked like. But yeah, the punch holes, definitely these, all these little small holes here would have been a safety concern and hazardous. And I hate when people like put the wheels inside the plastic. The stands are good if you get the right wheel. Shouldn't be a problem. Shouldn't have to punch holes in here. And for water bottles, please don't do that. You're not gonna be able to reuse the bin and it's not gonna hold up if you just do a bunch of punch holes. Plus for ventilation, which this is not what they did for ventilation. Punch holes, terrible for ventilation. Humidity builds up. I made the mistake of doing that in the beginning, but I had to literally leave the lids off while I was in the room just to make sure there was enough air circulation. So definitely don't do any of this. They have an eight inch wheel in here because I've used this before. And wow, that just kind of came right off there. Oh, I see. They try to put them at different heights. Now this is, God, this is more work than what it's worth. But yeah, this is an eight inch wheel. These are very plasticky and noisy. So if I place that on, that's what it sounds like. You can put baby oil on the axle. So it makes it a little quieter. But as you can see right here, if you can see the reflection, there's a lot of rings around here. That's because this was too close to the plastic. And so it actually caused friction for this wheel. So it just dug into the plastic and reshaped it a little bit to have those circular rings around it. And then it looks like there was something inside of here, which is another roundabout. But these are just, they're so tiny, even though they are bubbles and they do look a little bit bigger than the actual tunnels. And by the way, guys, this bedding is three inches high. It might not look like it, but it's at least three inches, so they did provide at least three inches there. But this is a snack shack. This has shavings inside mixed in with honey, and so it's not really safe to be chewing. There are people that have told me, well, it is edible um, wood, which there is edible wood on this planet. For those of you who are just not aware, you can definitely eat a specific type of wood, but just, it's a better idea to avoid these. There's different treats out there and to stick to seeds. And if you really need something where it's just jam packed and crowded in here, there's DIY projects on YouTube, on Etsy or not Etsy, Pinterest and things like that where they literally tell you how to make kind of a forager toy slash treat. This is not it. So this will be thrown away. And then of course the bedding is correct. The bedding type paper. They had one of these, which is the appropriate size, plus it has an open bottom so they won't get stuck inside the hide. They had what looks to be lab locks in here, but the thing is, because she had one curling misaligned tooth and because molars actually don't break these down, she could have been just suckling on these and not getting enough nutrients, but she was of the correct weight that she should be at. She was actually very good. Oh, that's, that's the downside to these poor hamsters with tooth and breathing and eye problems. This, what the heck is the, oh no. Wait, are you kidding? Oh no, okay. They use cat litter. This is a big no-no. So this is a corn-based cat litter. This, no, 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 no. Just gonna say right here, never use cat litter, never. This is wrong. They should have used sand. And when I say sand, yes, children's play sand's appropriate. And then of course, a natural sand, aquarium natural sand, reptile natural sand, yes. Cat litter that is the corn-based litter, which this one is the world's best cat litter, it looks like. This stuff, when it gets soiled, even though it is clumping, which is dangerous for them, by the way, if they ingest this and it starts clumping in their cheek pouch, if they get this around their urinary um, area and it starts clumping, it causes complications. I actually do blame this litter for having two UTI boys, just Casper and Finn, my personal cats, just suddenly after I switched to just trying this out because it was more eco-friendly than, you know, regular clay clumping litter, they developed UTIs and <laughs> I, I looked online to see if there was any sort of connection and I didn't really find a whole lot besides that this company has had lots and lots of bugs besides like another company that's similar. But yeah, no, th don't, no, no. Cat litter, no, 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 especially clumping, very dangerous for them. You could cause impaction. There's a tube right here and that tube actually connects to the bottom part, which this bottom part opens up here. But inside I can already see, I don't know what the heck this is. Oh, that's to hold it in place, I guess. But at one point 
this hamster did chew this. Although they did state that they had another hamster, so it's a possibility that this was used for the previous hamster, or it could be that they actually use this for her and she did have actual teeth and chewed up this little lip here that they've attached this whole thing to. Uh, they got the old water bottle, which these do still work when it comes to the KT Critter Trails. Uh, these water bottles definitely do work until they start leaking and then you can't get them to unleak themselves. Oh God, what type of material is this? Oh, what the, what the, what? Okay. This doesn't look familiar to me. This looks too grainy. Is this the this is the wrong type of aquarium sand? So this is this is the fake artificial sand. This can cause a lot of issues, especially uh, respiratory, because they do coat this. Um, so that's why it's not labeled as natural. It's it's most likely the brand from Petco, the Imaginarium or whatnot. This is stuff that you see in tanks where it's not actual natural sand. I, I just don't know what it is, but I know it's not natural. I know that they use like different coatings. There's so many resources online. So it's unfortunate that they resulted in getting the wrong type of sand. They just saw the word sand and thought that, oh, that means that it's natural, right? No. No, it's not, no. Here we are, we got some lava blocks. These are good, I really like this when it comes to chewing. Now this right here shows me that, again, there was teeth at one point because the sides are just chewed so severely, but this could also have been reused by the old hamster. I think they said that they only had the hamster for like, oh God, how long? I think they said they, ha they had the hamster since November. See, I do a lot of <laughs> surrender intakes. And so some of the stories might be mushing together, but I swear they said November. So they had it for maybe half of the year. And then we got another one down here. And then this is very interesting. This is so pale. I have like two more of these, but they're very dark in color, but this is so light. And it looks like there is some sort of dust on the back here. But okay, another one and it's open bottom. So that's good. Even though it is a small uh, little hide for Syrian hamsters, at least it has an open bottom because sometimes they do like to cram themselves in there, but I just don't like it when it's just closed off. And then what happens if they get stuck? And then, oh no, not again. Another one. <laughs> we got another litter station. Instead of adding like different hides or tunnels, they just had like three sets of sand that isn't appropriate. <laughs> and it's not even sand. And then, of course, the last item that you can kind of see in here. I don't know if I can. Oh, actually, maybe I can. Oh, I broke it. Ha <laughs> ha, I broke it. <laughs> Come out. How did you get this in here? It's stuck. Okay, we good. We good. This, which I don't know where they got, which is interesting because I've never seen this coloration of the KT water bottle, but this is clearly, they're both something to do with a KT style enclosure, but this right here, which they probably should never ever have had in there. That doesn't look like a six inch wheel, but this is a six inch wheel. This is smaller than our required size for Roboroskis. And of course this is smaller than mice because they do have long tails and once they get to adult size, they could be actually quite big. So this right here is not appropriate for any animal and it's super teeny tiny. And I just put away all of my Syrian size wheels, but like if you can see, they had two wheels. One was clearly bigger than the other. You don't even need this then. Plus, you shouldn't need this at all because it's not the correct size. 10 to 12 inch wheels are. So eight inch wheels are good for Jungarian, Winter White, Roboroski, mice, and gerbils if they are small enough. We've had very small gerbils at the rescue before, but sometimes they can get quite big. So roughly 10 inch wheels could be fine for gerbils too. So yeah, just not needed, trash. I mean, this one, unfortunately they didn't come with the stand unless it's in here or in there, but we're gonna check that out here. But basically this is it. Now each section of here I measure. So each one is 260 square inches, which is a total of I think around 520 square inches. However, this is broken floor space. This is actually going up and above where they have different sections. The better idea would just to have it be completely horizontal and not having to be broken off or divided so they can have one continuous space. So let's start off, not with the bag, but let's start off with whatever is in here. There's stuff in here that we could just kind of talk through, like this Timothy hay, which this from Carefresh is really old. It's lost its nutrition. So this is only for nesting material. So this will be fine. And then this is what they were using, which is pretty obvious. You can definitely tell right away. 
Um, oh, it looks like it's already open, so I need to be careful. Now with packages that are open, it's very hard to make sure that they aren't contaminated. And you can't really be sticking a bag like this one in the freezer, so you really have to see if there's anything crawling around and if you trust the people. This was actually in a sealed bin, so it's a possibility that there's nothing, you know, bad inside of here and they use it over in there and then we've already taken the hamster and looked her over. She doesn't have any mites or any fleas, but just be cautious when taking in used bedding. Looks like there is an an old Oasis bottle. I mean, I think these are still being used, but I, I like the new Oasis bottles better than these ones. But it looks like we have that. We have one of these, which KT, their glass bottles have issues with dispensing water. And I'm constantly having to like double check the nozzle for ours because we use these with gerbils. It's just such a freaking hassle because sometimes it completely stops and you're like, no, why? So we have to check on it several times and just get rid of ones that we think we'll never dispense again. I mean, some of them just stop and we try our best to clean within the nozzle too and clean around the, um, like if you get a Q-tip in here and clean it, that's how we kind of clean it to make sure nothing is like stuck or, you know, grimy and stuff. But sometimes that just, you know, doesn't help. Even new bottles can just not dispense water. It sucks. So what I typically like is the Oasis bottles. Oh God, what's this? This is heavy. Oh, it's in a green bag. And this is indeed premium aquarium sand. And this is Stony River. Let's see, none of this is natural. So polymer coated silica sand, ideal for aquariums, terrariums, crafts, and planters. And clearly it says coated. So this is very dangerous for your hamsters. Do not be using stuff like this. This is not the correct sand, natural sand. If it looks like natural sand, feels like natural sand, doesn't feel clunky like that, doesn't look like it's been like spray coated with something to keep the color in and to make sure it doesn't like, you know, seep into the water. That's why they coat it because it's supposed to be for water. Don't do it. <laughs> and it looks like they had, oh, here's a receipt. What is this for? Oh, they bought a lot of this at the pet store of which they got the hamster from. So they told me where this breaky hamster came from, which is not from Petco. Isn't that insane? She was not from Petco. She was from an actual local place. And this is the same store, which I <laughs> I don't want to be saying names here because some people are Washingtonians and they're like, I know that place. But this place um, was the one that told old Penelope's owners before we rescued her that basically she was, you know, not doing good, starving on guinea pig food because this pet store said that she was overweight and needed to eat a hay-based diet. So they were feeding her pellets. Anyways, so it looks like a lot of these things did come from that pet store, which of course they sell trash. And then of course, we got the cat litter, which is very dangerous. So world's best cat litter is made from renewable whole kernel corn and other natural ingredients for high performance. Um, just like with animal corn bedding or litter, it gets moldy. You don't want it to sit there for days upon days. I had urinary tract issues and it could just be because of the materials and you know, infestations because it's natural. Of course, it's gonna get naturally infested. This, I, I, I would not use. And I'm not even gonna use it for my cats because I'm too freaking terrified after that incident of one, one cat getting a UTI thinking, you know, it must be stress, right? It's stress. And then like a month later, another cat showing the same exact symptoms and we're like, this has never happened before and they've been living together for God knows how long. What the heck? It was very, very scary. Anyways, so enough of that. What is this? Pumpkin seeds. Oh, okay, so pumpkin seeds are completely fine for your hamsters and it's good as a treat. And it's a good source of magnesium, protein, zinc, and iron. So this I actually really like giving and passing around at the rescue. And let's see, the expiration date, because sometimes people donate expired food to us and we just really don't want to use it and can't use it. So let's see right here, 2021 in August. Okay, perfect, we can still use that. I'm always being cautious of the dates here. December, 2020, that's perfect. By the way, Oxbow treats, they do contain a lot of hay. Let's see, what is this one? This one's Timothy grass is the first ingredient. I don't really see 
hamsters wanting these type of biscuit treats. I would say if you really want to, Gerber Puffs in the baby section, in the little tube, that is definitely a treat that they love. So over this treat, I would suggest those treats. And we do have an exercise ball, but it's very, very filthy. You guys kind of already know my stance on this. So we have a really, really tiny tube. Do you see how tiny this is? This is freaking tiny. Again, KT is terrible. Do you see the rim on this? I don't know how this rim got chewed, but this is how a lot of hamsters escape because people trust the company and trust that, you know, their products are good and, you know, their hamster won't push out and escape in the tubes or the connectors. This is otherwise. Then we got another tube, which is clear. Another bottle, lots of bottles for some reason. You only need one bottle. It doesn't matter if it's top or bottom in that enclosure, at least. You just needed one, which I only saw one in there. Looks like your Sportified Diet Pro Health. Now this is decent food. It does have our official colors, which at Petco they got rid of. And I think um, companies are starting to phase out the colors and trying to go more natural. I'm trying to see if there's an expiration date on here without having to open this up because it's kind of sealed. But I am sure that they recently bought that. And then of course, here's the lab blocks, which we do use. These are decent as well. They're actually slightly above decent because they have taken out the colored little bits here and just left the lab blocks, which they should have been doing from the start, honestly. And last but not least, just a variety seed mix of what appears to be pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds, and it looks like little coconut flakes. So unfortunately, this care was not appropriate and not everybody has the luxury to know exactly where to go. We have the California Hamster Association in America and in Canada, the Ontario Hamster Club to help guide people. However, these clubs are based on word of mouth. If you guys are working in a pet store like environment, say for instance, like me here. So hi guys, I'm, I'm exactly like you. I used to work in a pet store. I used to tell people where to go because Petco and PetSmart and mom and pop pet stores provide their own care information about what you should be getting. And some of the information is just very vague. And some of the information is not really appropriate, especially when like, say for instance, Petco recommends dust powder for hamsters, which is very bad because they have sensitive respiratory systems. And unfortunately, if they just get information from the stores, a lot of times they will be led down the wrong path. Now, if they get you, for instance, maybe like you're working four out of seven days a week, the majority of people might come to you and be like, hey, I need help with hamster stuff. And you're like, hey, I'm the right person. And you provide them with the information. They, on their own time, have to run and take that information and do their own research further. You can't just expect that everybody would listen to you or remember what you tell them and then go out there and get all the things that you told them to get. Sometimes people like always kind of say, oh, well, this is more expensive than this and I might take this over this even though she recommended this. Huh, I wonder why. Like it gets very hard and discouraging, but it is based off of word of mouth that these hamsters will end up in better care versus that of which pet stores keep pushing out and keep mistakenly giving you the false sense that your baby is never gonna escape, nothing's ever gonna go wrong, we're just gonna give you this and then watch you fail. It's weird, I feel almost as if like, the KT company and other companies for small animals like Wear, which makes really awful cages. And then, you know, like the PetSmart own brand about the Tiny Tails, All Living Things line. They just like to set you up to fail so you can purchase more, replace things, get other things, just think that it'll work instead of just a one and done security deal. It just feels constantly like they know how to swindle you and know what gets you to come back. And the worst part about this too is either people get discouraged by all the bad information that they just don't want to own the hamster anymore and or had a hamster escape or pass away to not want to own the hamster anymore or they'll just keep buying and buying and buying not understanding this. That was me as a child. I hated it. It was awful. I broke one cage so we had to get another cage but because my parents felt that that wasn't appropriate because you know it's not an official cage by a company that labeled it as so. I was forced to get a cage that I found secondhand. But now we have better resources and we have people literally trying to push appropriate care, which is great. And now we're having this whole pandemic crisis about brachycephalic hamsters. Have you ever heard of brachies before? If so, leave them down below. 
or just let me know what you think about discovering this condition and or anything you want to say about what you saw in today's video. And subscribe if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family. So I'll see you guys around in the next introduction video to the rescue. Ta-ta! Bye!